creation or evolution? What's herbs got to do with it? Herbs, or ERVs, or endogenous retroviruses, are viruses derived from ancient viral infections of germ cells in humans, mammals, and other vertebrates. These retroviruses reverse transcribe their RNA into DNA for integration into the host hereditary information, or in other words, its genome. As such, then, the viruses are passed on to the next generation and now remain in the organism's hereditary information. Some retroviruses can also infect reproductive cells, eggs and sperm, and once they have done so and have been transmitted to the next generation, they are termed endogenous. Endogenous means produced or growing from within. Retro means backwards copying. So an ERV is an internally growing and produced backward copying virus inherited through reproductive cells. Evolutionists claim that herbs are undeniable proof that apes and humans evolved from a common ancestor. Here is their reasoning. Put simply, the evolutionist claims that since these backwards copying viruses are inherited, they will always show up in the same genetic location. Then they search for herbs in chimp DNA that are located in the same spot as those found in human DNA, claiming that any such herb is proof that we have a common ancestor. And, as a matter of fact, indeed, 14 of our 98,000 human herbs are found in the same location as our 14 chimp herbs. The evolutionists then proclaims that this discovery is irrefutable evidence in favor of evolution. But is this the entire truth of the matter? I'll bet you guessed it is not. First, a retrovirus injects a small strand of RNA into a cell where it splices and backwards copies itself into the host DNA to become an ERV sequence. The ERV must occur in DNA pertaining to reproduction in order to be passed onto the next generation and current credible research reveals that ERVs can move around after they have spliced into a gene. So the problem is this. Evolutionists simply ignore the proven fact that ERVs can move around and then they assume that an inherited ERV will always show up in the same genetic location. So then they search for ERVs in chimp DNA that are located in the same spot as those found in human DNA, claiming that any such ERV is indisputable proof that we have a common ancestor. So as it turns out, 14 of our 98,000 human herbs are found in the same location as our 14 chimp herbs. But this is only 0.00014%. This means that 99.99986% are not the same as the chimp DNA. Well, gee, stated like that, it puts a whole different light on the matter, doesn't it? Also, since the average ERV only contains 500 base pairs of genetic data, whereas a single human cell contains 3 billion base pairs of information, Claiming that herbs prove evolution is nothing more than evolutionist hype. Gee, have evolutionists ever hyped anything before? You bet they have. Ever heard of Piltdown Man and most recently, Eda? But back to the ERVs. Additionally, and very, very interestingly, there is also much current research that indicates that ERVs are really retroviral promoters or genetic switches in the human genome, and this research suggests that herbs may regulate human transfer of genetic information on a very large scale, actually serving a very useful purpose, apparently by design. The study of endogenous retroviruses is a fascinating and very complex science. There is much hype and much information in the world of cyberspace regarding this topic. The evolutionists have attempted to capitalize on many people's misunderstanding of the true science of this subject. But there really is a difference between real science and biased pseudoscientific humanistic conjecture. So what do herbs have to do with proving evolution? Really, absolutely nothing. And now you know 
the truth.